Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the fifth grade concept of multiplying decimals. This is standard 5.3e in the great state of Texas and we are using item number one of the redesign practice online star test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we have a recipe for one batch of cookies for 1.25 or 1 and 25 hundredths cups of butter. How many cups of butter are needed to make six batches of cookies? All right, so we're going to use our graph draw feature. Actually, a few different ways we can solve this. So did you know we can actually solve this without any type of multiplication? Because look at what we have here. We've got one batch of cookies is 1.25 and we need six batches. All right, so I'm gonna use my connect line here, and I am going to just make six batches. Now each of my batches are going to be a rectangle, and I could draw them if I wanted to, but I kind of like using this connect line feature. Only issue is, is you have to lift up every single time, because if I tried to round the corner, you see how it's just gonna make it kind of a, a diagonal. So you have to, Draw, lift up, so it knows to finish. All right, so here are my six batches of cookies. Each of these cookie batches, let's go back to draw, is 1.25. Now, when we're looking at this, we're thinking, oh, okay, so that's six times 1.25. And if you're thinking six times 1.25, you are correct. That is one way to do it. But some of you might also be thinking, you know what, if I really wanted to, multiplication is just kind of a shortcut for repeated addition. What if I were to, and I'm going to use the actual grid lines here, what if I were just to do repeated addition? Six sets of 1.25. If you wanted to do that, you would also be correct. So let's do both ways. Let's do six sets of 1 and 25 hundredths. And then we'll also do 1.25 times 6. Now, you notice that when I did the 1.25, I didn't really leave a spot for the decimal because the decimal is not as important when you multiply. So let's just see what happens when we add. So I've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. All right, so I'm going to skip count by twos and then add that three at the end. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Twelve plus three is fifteen. Carry the one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so seven point fifty. Now, whenever we're dealing with decimals, it's okay if you want to drop any zeros after the decimals. So seven point fifty. equals 7.5 because a zero afterwards not really super super important so it's looking like that a right there but let's see what happens when we multiply so when we multiply decimals we don't have to line up the decimals when you add and subtract decimals you better believe you need to line up the decimals everything is lined up right here but when you multiply decimals there's no need to actually line up the decimals. What we what we want to do is we just want to pretend it's 125 times 6. We will deal with that decimal afterwards. So pretend it's just 125 times 6. So we start right with the 5 and the 6, that's 30. Then we have the 6 and the 2, that's going to be 12. And then you have to add that 3, that's 15. Right, and then you do six times one is six, add the zero is going to be seven. All right, so 750 now is when we deal with this decimal. How many digits are behind the decimal in our factors? I've got two digits there, and then I don't have any digit behind the decimal in the six. So I need two digits behind the decimal in my product. So I'm gonna bring it right there. So that's how you multiply with decimals. You just kind of ignore it, you bring it back in at the end, Either way, our answer is A.